Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Diggy546? Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so day two of the Lions uh, Giants joint practice. And uh, today, from what I saw, I didn't see as much kind of detail on, you know, what side got the better of what, because practice kind of got shut down because the brawls just kept ensuing. They, they were practicing kickoff, which is gonna be really huge this year. And a point that I'll get to a little bit down later uh, in this video, but they were practicing kickoffs and they say pretty much after every rep of, of practicing the special teams, there was just a brawl that ensued. So they had to cut practice short, which is unfortunate, but I do think that the Giants and the Lions both still got something effective out of both of these practices. So good stuff. Uh, I don't remember if the Lions are on our schedule this year, but we'll play them on Thursday. Uh, probably your starters probably won't play, maybe on both sides. They might throw DJ out there because he's coming off of the ACL, hasn't played in a while, but you, a lot of times when you see that joint practice, you don't see them then again play against each other. At least the starters don't. So we'll see. But uh, good work. Good work from the Lions. I'm sure there's some Lions fans and some Giants fans that, that have gotten some, some rivalries going on because of, you know, the, our back and forth in practice. And uh, I got to start it off by talking about Malik Neighbors. And it's just, he he's the trending topic. He's the guy. He's, he's let's just say, Jordan Renan on Twitter says that he has Malik neighbors being targeted 18 times and coming down with 17 grabs. And I think the one grab that he didn't make was like a contested, like if you want to use Madden vernacular, a spectacular catch, a contested catch over the top of somebody's head where he just couldn't come down with it. I'm pretty sure uh, they're counting that, uh, that, that catch that he made that he landed out of bounds, but I'm not sure. But nonetheless, 17 uh, catches, 18 targets is crazy good. Uh, I'm sure I haven't seen all of them. So a lot of them may have been screens or maybe some slants, but that's still a great catch radius because you see, or a good catch rate, because you see that he is making plays downfield and, and that just makes me happy. It shows uh, you're starting to see that he's, he's separating himself as a guy who is a number one caliber receiver He's not being guarded by one guy. He's he's always open, uh, and he's not open. Daniel Jones, for the first time in years since, for some reason, Golden Tate, is throwing the ball up to Malik Neighbors for him to go up and snatch it out of the air, and I just love it. I just love it. The, the confidence that Daniel Jones has already shown in Malik Neighbors is going to pay dividends if we can keep that same level of confidence going into the season. I mean, we're going to make a ton of huge plays with Malik Neighbors, and those plays are only going to make things easier for Jalen Hyatt, for Darius Slayton, who are also going to be going deep. And then also you got Juan Dale, who's going to be working that middle of the field, working some of those short routes. And then also occasionally you're going to see him go down, you know, probably on a lot of these deep seams. Same thing for your tight end and your running backs underneath. And, and I'll get to the running backs because I keep on kind of teasing I the kick return, in my opinion, has something to do with uh, Dante Miller. And I'll just address it right now. Maybe I'll go back to Malik Neighbors. But for now, uh, I just want to talk about this running back room. Because last year, when we took Eric Gray, I was excited. I thought Eric Gray was going to be a good player for us. He didn't really get much opportunity last year. But when he did get opportunity, he didn't really jump off the page. He had some elusiveness. But he doesn't really, I mean, you never really see like, oh, he made this huge play or anything that just where you really remember it. And I think that's unfortunate because I think he can be a good back in a rotation. But right now, it's not looking like he's going to get that opportunity because we're watching uh, Devin Singletary, who's making guys miss, who's, who's getting upfield, doing what Devin Singletary has always done his whole career, which is be, be a good running back. Uh, maybe a little bit above average, but a good running back uh, who's, who's a guy that should be getting around a thousand yards every season. Hasn't gotten it, but has been an eight, nine hundred yard rusher uh, with fairly low, uh, low usage in his career so far. Um, but Tyrone Tracy, man, Tyrone Tracy, he's already shown as a runner that he's making plays in camp. He's showing it as a receiver, which he's a former receiver. 
and it, it's just good to see. I mean, I've compared him to guys like Alvin Kamara, which I'm excited about. Sometimes he, you know, his play style, not the not the body type, but the play style looks like Le'Veon Bell, and it just. It just kind of gets me excited to see what he'll do in an actual game. But uh, Tyrone Tracy has been jumping off the screen uh, all offseason, really. And, and, and coaches are raving about how fast he's picking things up and, and what he's doing in the open field, really making a difference uh, when he touches the football. And then also Dante Miller, Turbo Miller, the guy from the Ivy League that we signed, where I just pretty much said, listen, we got Eric Gray, we got Tyrone Tracy. There's no space for, for Dante Miller on this team. I was that's what I was thinking and Dante Miller just continues to stand out on a regular basis uh, he got a touchdown yesterday I think I saw him make a play today he's made plays all offseason in training camp and OTAs and it just makes you say does Eric Gray really have a spot on this roster unless we keep four running backs um, I'm not sure and if Eric Gray does make this roster over Dante Miller it's simply because of draft position that, that's really all you can kind of lean on because um, it's it's looking like those two are the better players uh, when you're looking at that running back position. And then on top of that, Eric Gray, as the fourth running back, you, you would want something from him. And he's already shown that he's not a reliable returner. Tyrone Tracy, I think, could be a good returner for us. I think Dante Miller with his speed, both of their speed and quicknesses, I could see them being returners. I could see them helping us out in more than one way. And Eric Gray seems like he'd be a nice change of pace running back and a two or three back system, but it's looking like it's gonna be Singletary and Tracy. That's what it's looking like uh, they want these, these top two running backs to be from what I've seen and the reps they've been getting and what I've been hearing. So Eric Gray is gonna be at best your third running back, which is what is gonna get three or four carries a game. You're, you're never gonna be able to get into any sort of a, a rhythm like that so I feel bad for Eric Gray but it, it looks like that's just the reality of what's going on for him and um, hopefully he can make some plays this offseason and made a best this preseason and made the best running back of this group uh, you know who's going to get that third spot and made the best guy win because even if that fourth guy makes the roster they're going to be getting negligible negligible carries um, Moving on, uh, back to Malik Neighbors. He was so dominant these past two days against the Lions that he started taunting them. He he knocked the guy on the helmet like this, and, and a brawl ensued. A brawl ensued. Malik Neighbors was throwing punches. Um, I'm forgetting the guy's name, but one of their cornerbacks started throwing punches at him, and um, it, it was just mayhem. It was just mayhem, and it just the fights have continued to happen. And you don't want to see anybody get hurt from these fights. But at the same time, the type of dog mentality that we had to come in with today, I mean, we had to come in with these last two days. I, I really feel like we answered the call. The Lions are a rough team. And sadly, they, I, I really think that the Lions are a really good team to go at, go at before the season. But sadly, this is probably not going to happen next year because of all of the fights this year. I just don't think it'll happen. Uh, one or two fights maybe, but fight after fight after fight after fight. Uh, I just don't think they're going to bring them back up here or up to uh, up to New Jersey. I don't think that they'll they'll joint practice again next year because there was just too many fights. <laughs> and I'm sure Tom Coughlin, who was in attendance, and, and like Michael Strahan was in attendance, everybody was uh, as far as not everybody, but a lot of Giants legends were in attendance. And I'm sure Tom Coughlin was like losing it in his mind, looking at all of those, uh, all of those fights. I'm sure he wanted to blow his whistle and, and just absolutely lose it. So uh, of course he didn't do that, but it, it, it's it was it got completely out of hand. And um, you kind of want to say, does the coach have a good handle on everything? But at the same time, you, that's kind of what you want to see at this point. You, you want to see your guys uh, standing up for each other. And, and really bringing fire at the beginning of the season, which I think we did a great job of. I love these joint practices. It showed that Malik Neighbors is still doing his thing. It showed that um, Daniel Jones is still confident in Malik Neighbors uh, going against other teams. And I can't wait to see this game. If DJ and Malik Neighbors play, that's gonna be my number one um, 
place that I'm going to look, I'm going to be looking at Theo Johnson and the rest of these tight ends. Lawrence Cager's been getting a lot of um, praise in OTAs and training camp, but I didn't see many plays made by Lawrence Cager against the actual Lions. So um, the offense is definitely what I'm looking at. Um, the defensive line, I feel very confident in. But um, one more day, and, and that's what I'm saying. Tomorrow, we got the day off. And uh, Thursday, we're going to be playing our first game in, in a long time. It's going to be a preseason game, but it's going to be your first Giants game you're going to get in a long time. And I'm excited for it. I'm pumped up for it. You guys way down in the comments, what are you looking forward to in this preseason game? I'm not going to come out with a pregame for a preseason game, but I probably will be live streaming. And if not, you will definitely see me make uh, a post game. To, to talk about some of the things that we saw. So you guys have a great rest of your day and let me know what you're thinking of the Giants offseason so far. You made it this deep into the video. Come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily. And during the season, I'm gonna be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squads.